One of the most unfortunate inventions of the 20th century, interlacing. It may have worked well for broadcast, but splitting video into two fields has wreaked havoc on editors the world over ever since. That's why we'll be showing you the different methods of de-interlacing footage like the field combination method, field extension method, and motion detection method so that you can know which method will be the most efficient at making your footage look its best. Before we start going over how to de-interlace footage, it's good to know what interlacing is and how it came to be. Interlacing was invented way back in the 1930s in order to make video frame rates appear to be twice as fast as they actually were. The challenge was to do all of this without increasing transmission or file size in broadcast. By recording in this method, fast action such as the kind you see in live sports coverage could look smooth despite the limitation in frame rates. To do this, each signal was split into two fields, an odd field and an even field. Each field was recorded or displayed every 1 60th of a second. Unfortunately, this means that when working with this kind of footage in an editing system, it can be difficult to do accurate frame-by-frame -frame edits since each frame is really two fields of video taken at separate times. In addition, this also means that playing interlaced footage on progressive screens like LCDs and plasmas can wind up looking pretty bad since the interlaced lines will be visible. This is why so many editors end up choosing to deinterlace their footage and why we'll be looking at the different ways it can be done. The first method of deinterlacing is called the field combination method. This is the most straightforward way to get rid of those pesky interlaced lines. Basically, field combination takes both fields of video and overlays them into one whole frame. Here's what our video looks like with interlacing, and here's how it looks after using the field combination method. Doing this makes frame-by-frame -frame editing easier and keeps the vertical resolution of your picture, but also results in a low-quality movement called ghosting or combing. Combing is when something in motion in your video appears to have a low-opacity copy of itself near the object in motion. This appears as a result of showing two fields which are captured at slightly separate times together in one frame of your video. Because of this, the field combination method is the least preferred among editors since temporal resolution is so low in the image. However, this method is the fastest way to deinterlace video and is the only way some editing programs have to deinterlace footage. So you may still have to use it after all. Another common way to deinterlace footage is by using the field extension method. Field extension is done by copying either your odd or even field and pasting it over your missing field of video. Here's what our video looked like before deinterlacing, and here's what it looks like after using this method. As you can quickly see, this method reduces the vertical resolution by half, but keeps a smooth motion since our frame rate is now the same as the field rate in our video. Unfortunately, this method is often used by editing programs to deinterlace on the fly due to the simplicity of rendering the effect. However, much like the field combination method, it's not a preferred way of deinterlacing due to the perceivable drop of quality in the image. The last and best method of deinterlacing footage is to use motion detection. This advanced method works by having your software reconstruct the missing field of video in your image by looking at the frame that comes before and after the current field and building a new one based off of the position of the objects in motion. Here's how our footage looked with interlacing and here's what it looks like with motion detection deinterlacing applied. As you can tell, this method looks the best since it's actually building new fields of video instead of throwing them away or combining them. The only downside of this method is the sheer amount of time it can take to process a piece of deinterlaced footage. Some encoding programs such as Compressor and Sorensen and Squeeze can literally take hours to render a five minute piece of video using this method. Not great news for someone who's on a tight deadline. Most editors will be relieved to hear that even if you're stuck with interlaced footage, it doesn't mean your footage can't look its best. Instead, by using one of the deinterlacing methods we've shown you, you can help your footage look great no matter what screen it's on.